Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It's Friday morning. Almost there for the weekend, guys. And it's the 29th of March. We've got our coffee. So I thought today we'd talk about the tendencies to overcomplicate things, whether it be in life or in the repair shop. So stay tuned. So welcome back. My name is Eric, if you didn't already know it, and this is the weekday show. We cover a wide spectrum of things that I think might interest you or will interest you. And today is overcomplicating, overthinking, and we all do it. It's just to varying degrees. And I think that for most of us, when we're learning something new, is when we tend to overcomplicate, overthink things, right? I'm not saying that if you're really good at something that you don't overcomplicate things as well. But when it comes to small engine repair, I'm not sure about like with the new auto automotive repairs nowadays and stuff like that but I can talk about small engine repair and that is in its simplest form if you don't overcomplicate it you know that any engine that you face has four critical components that you have to test for one is compression one is fire fuel and air now any one of them can cause you to go further into that area but let's say that you have no fire well let's go with no compression but you've decided that you're going to overcomplicate things and you're going to start trying to figure out, well, what could be causing this? And there's a number of things that could be causing it. But usually on most things, like your two strokes, if you don't have compression, the cost to fix them these days usually outweigh doing the repair. But if we're talking like a lawnmower engine or something, you know, where you have overhead valves that you can adjust and bring that compression up. Because this is a small engine repair shop. We're, our main goal is to find whatever the issue is as quickly as possible, correct it, and get paid, right? But if we start overcomplicating, overthinking things, what happens? We start spending more time doing stuff that we really didn't have to do. But we thought we should. And what ends up happening is when you start doing that, if you're doing it on your dime, that's one thing. But if you're a mechanic or a repair shop owner, you're asking your customer to trust you with your experience to find whatever the issue is as quickly as possible and resolve it. And resolving it could be simply coming back to the customer and saying, look, it's just not worth fixing. You know, you could actually order a jug, a new piston, you know, do a complete teardown. And just alone, the parts, I mean, you can buy parts for a lot of your steels now overseas for 48 to 50 bucks for the kits, right? But we can't just look at what it costs for the part, can we? We have to look at labor. And how much labor intensive is that job going to take? See now, if you watch any of my repair videos, 
I have a compression tester out, a spark tester out. I do the sniff test and I look at the air filter. Is it getting all three? If I have no compression, and what I'm getting at is to do those three things, you could do it in under 10 minutes, five minutes. You know, a couple minutes for some of us. Simply throw the compression tester right on there first, give her some five or six pulls, or if you're working on the lawnmower, throw the compression tester with the V on one side, crank it over four or five times, check it, do it on the other side, check it. It doesn't take that long. But over and over and over, I've seen people that call themselves mechanics jump past the compression and the spark. And they go right to fuel or the air filters plugged or and they start working bass backwards they're working from the the end result of the four parts working back towards fire and compression and what if you spent three to four hours you've rebuilt the carburetor you put a new air filter on it or blew it out whatever replace the fuel on it place the fuel filter on it and you still can't get it to run so you think well maybe the coil's bad so you swap the coil out we're talking a chainsaw right now so you got a, a good used coil there or you have a brand new one you throw that on there for the customer how much time have you just wasted on a new air filter draining the fuel putting new fuel in it putting a new fuel filter on it and rebuilding the carburetor putting on a used coil or a new coil if you've got one a good used one or a new one to see if it's that and you still haven't checked compression and then when you do check compression it's like well shit you know that was my problem right from the get go Okay, so why didn't you start there? And a lot of times it's because we overcomplicate and overthink. We go with our gut instead of scientifically the correct way. Our gut says, oh, it's got to be the carburetor. So we tear the carburetor all apart. Or we put it in the ultrasonic cleaner for <laughs> half an hour or whatever. If you haven't checked the compression on that motor, on a chainsaw, weed eater, what have you, who's going to pay for all that? Are you going to call the customer up and say, okay, here's what it costs. It, it was only 400 and some dollars on a chainsaw, a steel chainsaw, that you could have bought brand new for 300 And by the way, we found out that it has no compression. If you told me that and I was a customer, I would be livid because you've broken most of the cardinal rules, right, of being a good steward and a good repair shop and, and doing quality work. And that is, why didn't you check the compression first before you did all this other stuff? Well, I didn't think that was it. My gut told me it was the carburetor, or it was the spark plug, or it was the fuel filter, or it was a <coughs> excuse me. In less than one minute, I could have told you whether that thing was going to run or not, based on what the compression tester said. And I would have the same customer, but my story would be. Sir, we did a compression check on your saw. It's running down too low. She's tired and worn out. And for the cost to rebuild it, you could buy a brand new one. Now, who is that customer going to be? Customer going to be more happy with? Both are bad news. 
okay, the customer, you're telling them that it can't be fixed. But when I say it can't be fixed, the max I'm going to charge you is 40 bucks. Whereas if I done bass backwards, it's almost 500 bucks. And, and if you're a mechanic and you're doing it this way and you're costing your shop and reputation money, you need to change. You need to stop overthinking things. You need to do it exactly how it should be done. Do your compressions. Single cylinder, do your compression. Twin cylinder, do your compressions on each side. That's the first thing. But I see this in life too, you know, especially in relationships, that one tendency, the one of the two, the tendency is to overcomplicate things and make things harder than what they needed to be. And with any good relationship, it starts off most often the case with you have things that you like doing together. And in its simplest form, it could be just going down to the creek and fishing for catfish or brookie trout up in the Adirondacks. That's its simplest form. Doesn't cost much. It's pretty low keyed. You're spending time together. And if you don't catch any fish, it's not the end of the, the world because they don't call it collecting fish. They call it trying to catch fish. You're fishing. But if you start overcomplicating that over you need the best lures, the best fishing rod, the best the best, the best, and you're trying to impress the other person instead of just enjoying the moment, enjoying the time with that person. You have overcomplicated it. You overthunk it. And we all do it at times when we feel that that person in our life is really important enough so that we act like stupid jerks. <laughs> That's for you ladies, guy. I mean, we do. You know, especially with our better habits and stuff, with dating and stuff like that, you know, we're probably total jerks sometimes because we didn't want to... We wanted to make sure that that person thought of us as much as we did them, right? But the issue was, they already did or they wouldn't be hanging out with you. Right? And I've seen people take where I've had a lot of relationships with women that were simply platonic friendships. That's as far as it would ever go. And I knew it. They knew it. We enjoyed it. And this is another way to overcomplicate things. Is to think that, well, if we're best friends, just think what we would be as a couple. And there's different traits involved between good friends and partners. All right? There's a lot of area in there that can go wrong. But if one side starts thinking that there's hope to go that next level and the other one is like, no, this is the ceiling. One of you is overcomplicating things. And instead of just being happy with the relationship the way it was as friendships, a good friendship, someone that you could trust and tell anything to, You now want to take it to the next level, and she doesn't. She's not interested. Whether it's just, 
I'm not interested in getting tied down at this time or being somebody else's because some people become overbearing and I'm talking the male side and the females do it too is once you start going out it's kind of like well she is my property well no she's not she's her own property and if she decides she wants to stay with you fine but there's nothing you start t treating her like your piece of property I guarantee you you will lose her and I've seen women you know if their guy and us guys are stupid sometimes well maybe more often than just sometimes but sometimes we're totally clueless when someone is hitting on us because we're not sending out those vibes of hit on us but the girlfriend or the wife can see it because women have got like you know you have that 2020 vision well I mean they've got a microscope because they can tell you when another woman is flirting with you And some women will blame you for the other one flirting with you. All right, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. But one of the, the key takeaway is, and we've all done it, of where when someone is talking to us, telling us what they want or they need, and we're not listening, we're thinking of our comeback on you know what our response should be and this and that you're overcomplicating things you know just relax listen whether it be a relationship or whether it be you know repair work you can't overcomplicate and I see this the most especially in a busy shop and this has happened to us before with Claude, is we will get slammed with like seven or eight lawnmowers, right? Riders. And he's trying to get them knocked out. And you have one that come in as a no start. Well, for whatever reason, we couldn't get it to start or the customer says it won't start. But Customers said, well, I want a service on it, complete service, sh sharpen the blades, and a little tune-up. And that's what Claude heard, because he normally talks to the customer when it comes to what is it doing or not doing. But I, I've seen him in the past get in a hurry, and to save time, he starts doing a service on three or four machines at the same time. He starts draining the oil on this one, you know, does the fuel filter, spark plugs, air filter, and then jumps to the second one while the first one's still draining, starts that one, and goes right around. But I can remember he did that on one that was a no start. And Went out and he's and he's still working on the lawnmower. He's got the carburetor off and he's looking at trying to clean up the carburetor. So what's the matter? And he said, I can't get it to start. I said you can't get it to start and you've already done a service on it? Because what we've always done it in the shop is you do your checks first. And once she's running good, then do your service. But it was trying to get things done and you get in a hurry. He had bypassed the most critical thing in our shop and that is check compression. Because in the end on that unit, it had bad compression. And as a shop, we had to eat the service and the time because that should have been checked first. So. When it comes to repairing stuff, don't overcomplicate things. Stick to the basics. The basics will always help you out. 
yes, I know a lot of you guys say I'm experienced. I go with the gut. You know, my gut on what it should be. But if you're not checking compression first, even on a gut instinct, then you need to rethink on how you're approaching things. And that's the same thing in life with with friends and partners and, and just people you meet, any form of a relationship. A lot of times just listening to what the other person says without not listening, because there's a lot of people do this, and I've done this before myself, and that is when someone's talking to you, you're thinking something totally, you know, come back or this or that, and you're not listening to what the person just told you. And the person is telling you maybe of what they need out of you, what they would like to get out of you. And you've totally lost it because you weren't listening. Checking the compressor on the engine is the same thing. You weren't listening. You didn't check to see if it was worth fixing or what your next step should be. On that note, you guys enjoy your Friday. We'll see you here bright and early Monday morning. You know, have you ever run into that? In your own shop or working on your own stuff or where you overcomplicated things? I know I have. And I know it won't be the end of it either. But I strive to be better and do things the way they should be done instead of how I think they should be done. All right, guys.